Hello, I am Dr. Manita Daniel Cox, Associate Professor of Voice and Coordinator of the Voice Area at the University of Dayton. And I'm also the founder of the Dunbar Music Archive. This is an online searchable database that explores text by Paul Ernst Dunbar and the composers that set it. Why Paul? Well, Paul's a Dayton, he's a Dayton native. He's born and raised in Dayton, Ohio. Um, his grave is in Woodland Cemetery, which is proximal to um, the University of Dayton campus. His first poetry reading happened about a mile and a half from where I'm sitting right this minute. His spirit is strong in Dayton, Ohio. He was the first African-American poet to live by his pen, to make his living by his pen. He wrote in both dialect and standard English both equally beautiful, though he was really quite famous in his lifetime for the dialect poetry. I call Paul uh, your favorite poet's favorite poet. And that's because that phrase, I know why the caged bird sings, that influenced Maya Angelou so heavily that she used it for the title of her book, as well as a poem, is actually by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And it's from a poem called Sympathy. County Cullen has a poem dedicated to Dunbar. Dunbar's use of language and elegance is mirrored in the works of Zora Neale Hurston and Langston Hughes. He is the literary predecessor to James Baldwin, the birth of black thought. There is absolutely no in-depth conversation about the music of black Americans without the inclusion of Dunbar. Just can't happen. Why talk about a composer or two or three when we can talk about the voice that inspires so many. And absolutely, performing artists are drawn to the works of Dunbar, including visual artists like Bing Davis, as well as performing artists, dancers, like the Dayton Contemporary Dance Company. They have several numbers of choreographed rep with Dunbar's poetry. Music is present in every facet of his work. He uses music as a thematic source. Song lyrics are present in poems. He even uses incidental music in his recitals. In between recitations of poetry, you hear music, both standard classics, as well as musical settings of his own text. His works influenced Florence Price, Zenobia Powell Perry, Harry Burley, Betty Jackson King, Marcus Garrett, Harrison Leslie Adams to create art songs. He, he encouraged his, his work, influenced the works of William Grant Still, who created beautiful orchestral works based on Dunbar's um, poetry, the Afro-American Symphony, um, even opera. He was librettist um, and working in collaboration with Samuel Coleridge Taylor, an Afro-British composer. They collaborated and wrote an operetta together called Dream Lovers. And this operetta is so noteworthy because it was specifically designed for singers of color. After his death, he moves from Metastasio to Metastasian hero. He goes from being lyricist and librettist to being subject matter. His short life was so tumultuous that Richard Thompson, Stephen Allen, and Dolphus Hailstork have all based composed staged works on Dunbar's legacy. Now I mentioned lyricist and I need to be more specific there because his work with Will Marion Cook changed the landscape of American music. I know it's sensitive and I myself hesitated to really embrace it, but his work with Will Marion Cook bridged the music of minstrelsy with the music of musical theater that we love so much today. Hugely important. And a shout out to Marva Carter, who I met at the Society of American Music Conference in Boston not too long ago, and who began to open my mind to all of this. Um, the, the works he did with Will Marion Cook, just like white folks, Clarindy, Uncle F's Christmas, are completely part of that bridge that links 
early Americana music to musical theater. I even argue that Paul influenced hip hop. Not only did he hustle to sell his first book, sold it while he was working as an elevator man in the Callahan building in downtown Dayton, Ohio. Very Master P-like of him, might I say. But he also comes about during this strong tradition of this plantation tradition, this um, idea of this really nostalgic desire for antebellum life when the white man was pinnacle and the darkies were happy in the field. And very often these ideas are voiced by black characters. So what Paul does is he takes those black characters and he turns them on their head. And he offers a scathing critical social commentary, much like N.W.A., Tupac, or Kendrick Lamar today. He spits. Um, even like Jay-Z, he chooses his Queen B, and he falls absolutely in love with Alice Ruth Moore based on a picture and a published poem of her own. She is a brilliant writer in her own right. So Paul still has these chains and the gold teeth, but if you listen very carefully, he's saying something different than what you're used to. And his constant message is that of the everyday hero, that of the nobility of every man. I'm now going to play When Melindy Sings, and this is a wonderful example of so many of the things I've mentioned. Music as topic, melodic references within the context of the poem, and this idea that your fancy education don't make you better. Honey, when it comes to rile right singing, taint no easy thing to do. And this character shares that with Miss Lucy. Before we go, when Melindy sings. When Melindy sings. Now go away and quit that noise, Miss Lucy. Put that music book away. What's the use to keep on trying if you practice till you grin? Cause you can start no notes of flying like the ones that rants and rings from the kitchens to the wigoo, big woods when Melindy sings. And you ain't got the natural organs for to make the sound come right. And you got the turns and the twisted for to make it sweet and light. Now I'm telling you one thing, Miss Lucy, and I am telling you for true. When it comes to real right singing, it ain't no easy thing to do. Easy enough for folks to holler looking at the lines and the dots when ain't no one can sit and the tune comes in in spots. But for real melodious music, just, just strikes your heart and clings. Just you stand here and listen with me when Melinda say, ain't you never heard Melinda? Bless soul, take up the cross. Look here, ain't you joking, honey? You don't know what you done lost. You ought to hear that gal of wobbling, robins, locks, and all them things. Hush they mouth and hide they faces when Melinda sings. Fiddling man just stops his fiddling and lay his fiddle on the shelf. And the mockingbird quits trying to whistle cause he just so shamed to himself. And folks are playing on the banjo, draps their fingers on the strings and bless your soul forgets to move them <laughs> when Melinda sings. Now she just spreads her mouth and hollers, come to Jesus. Twelve you hear sinners, trembling steps and voices, timid like, a drawing near. And then she turns to her rock of ages. Simply to the cross she clings and you find your tears are dropping when Melinda sings. Now who that says that humble praises with the master never counts? Hush your mouth, I hear that music as it rises and it mounts, floating by the hills and valleys way above this burying sod as it makes its way in glory to the very gates of God. Oh, it's sweeter than the music of an educated band, and it's dearer than the battle song of triumph in the land, and it seems holier than evening when solemn church bells ring as I calmly sit and listen while Melindy sings.
tells her, you stop that barking, you hear me? Mandy, make that child keep still. Don't you hear the echoes are calling from the valleys to the hills? Let me listen. I can hear it through the brush of angels' wings, soft and sweet. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low as Melindy sings. <laughs>